this is humanity's problem. They, humanity, man, Adam and Eve, trusted the word of the beast, the snake, instead of God's word. They trusted the beast's way of living and seeing things instead of trusting God's way of living and seeing things. And hence, they separated themselves from God and became selfish. The real battle is God versus Satan, which is practically, practically manifested in love versus selfishness. So back then in the Garden of Eden, we find humanity tempted by a beast to behave in a beast-like manner, in a selfish manner, a particular way that showed their allegiance to the beast instead of God. And as a result of behaving in that beast-like manner, in a selfish manner, they ended up losing their place in the Garden of Eden. Right? And we read in Revelation that if we don't, or if we, if we behave in a beast-like manner, if we receive the mark of the beast on the hand or on the forehead, if we behave outwardly or inwardly in a beast-like manner, we will not be on the sea of glass. Are you with me? Selfishness is the root of all beast-like behavior. Selfishness is the root of all beast-like behavior. Now, with this in mind, we can better understand why the world we live in is the way it is. Uh, we live in a world that is governed by selfishness. Every man to his own. Selfishness is the root of all wars and, and conflict in the world. I mean, <clears throat> not only in the world, not only outside, but it is the root of all splits, divisions, and heartache in the church and in the family. Why do you think churches split, ministries crumble, brothers divide, partners divorce, lovers separate? Why? You analyze each and every situation and you will find selfishness at the root of every evil. Yes, the Bible says uh, that the love of money is the root of all evil. But that's true, right? It's true. But if you analyze that, why do people love money more than their family, more than their children, more than their parents, more than themselves? Why? Because they're selfish. They want everything, me, 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 everything to themselves, right? And how did Jesus conquer the world? How did Jesus conquer the prince of the air and the God of this world? By love, by laying his life down for others. It is the total opposite of the beast-like behavior. You cannot eliminate hate with hate. You cannot bomb your way to peace or, or bully your way to friendship or push yourself to respect. It doesn't work that way. God in his wisdom knew that to conquer the selfishness in this world, he needed to bring in a new element, an element that is totally opposite to selfishness. And it is love. He needed to make man partaker of his nature again. That is the only solution. Now, the Bible illustrates this uh, uh, contrast by using uh, the imagery of light and darkness. <clears throat> Notice what John says. He says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Now, I will show you later in the study that, that uh, uh, this light or this life has a practical reality, and its practical reality is love. It's not just a theoretical philosophy, right? It has a practical reality. Now, going back to our question, to the subject matter of our discussion, of our, of our study, to the title of the study, the mark of God. What is the mark of God? Does the Bible give us a direct answer to what the mark of God is? I believe it does. As a matter of fact, we can find it in, in, in Jesus' words, in in the words, the last words of a dying man. You, you know, when, when someone is on his deathbed or on death row and takes time to speak, he usually cuts through all the nonsense and goes to the most important thing that is on his mind. 
And when Jesus was on his death row uh, in that last supper, after he had supper with the disciples, right? He, he was he was about to be crucified in in few hours time. He cut through all the stuff, and he went to the went to the most important thing that he wanted his disciples and you and me to understand. And he told us, he told his disciples and us what the mark of God is, what the identifying mark of his disciples is. Notice what he says. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. It's, it's very interesting what he did not say. He did not say, look, the world will know that you are my disciples by your Sabbath keeping, by your alms giving, by your theological beliefs, by your feeding the poor. He didn't say that. He didn't say any of that. He says, look, the identifying mark that is going to set you aside from any other group out there, from any other group of people, from any other whatever, is the love that you have one for another. When the world looks at you and sees this particular identifying mark, the love that you have one for another, they will know that you are my people, that you are my disciples, right? Uh, it, it, it is a specific God-like behavior that marks God's people, that sets them aside from any other people. It's a God-like behavior, right? Now, notice Jesus didn't say, uh, if you have love for the world, if you have love for the lost, that, that's not what he said. Even though, the, even though that is important. It, all the things that I mentioned before, the Sabbath keeping, the doctrinal beliefs, the, the, the uh, law keeping, it's all important. And Jesus spoke about it elsewhere. But on his death row, in these last very important words, that, that he will give a mark, uh, an identifying mark that will set his people apart, he, he put all these things on the side and he went to the most important one. Love one for another. He didn't say love for the lost even though he said that in other places, right? But when he spoke about this mark, this identifying mark, he says that you love one another. As a matter of fact, look at the context. He says, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one another. To another hang on a second what do you mean a new commandment lord i mean we read about it in the old testament that the law says thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself the the uh the words might be old traditional love might be old but the concept of love jesus was talking about is a new concept you see within 24 hours he was about to uh uh, uh 24 hours of him uttering these words, saying these words, he was about to lay down his life for a bunch of people who will deny him, betray him, and run away from him. Not only that, but he was about to lay down his life for a bunch of people who were killing him. Jesus was laying down his life for Caiaphas, for the soldier who pierced him, for those who put him on the cross. He was laying down his life to everyone.